the following game contains graphic content and may disturb some viewers. Hey guys, Passivish here, and today we will be looking at the Flash game released by Peter yesterday, as of when I'm recording this, within which they try to convey the message that Pokemon, uh, the Pokemon uh, video games, encourage children uh, towards animal cruelty. So let's have a look. Now Peter have been known to do this before, releasing Flash games against Mario and Super Meat Boy, which we will discuss later. For now, here's the intro to the game. As battling Pokemon grew in popularity, generations of children were growing up believing that Pokemon exist for no other reason than to be used and abused by humans. Children learned about dominance instead of compassion, while Pokemon faced the worst abuses. Children also started to bully each other, until one Pokemon decided he'd had enough. Now straight up we get into our first battle and you'll instantly notice that Pikachu's appearance is quite uh, the dismembered one. As you can see, he is covered in blood, bandages, and has chunks missing out of his ears. Now we'll talk about Pikachu's attacks later, but as you can see, Cherin is about to use Choke Collar, which uh, is the first of one of his three moves, uh, which display the uh, overly uh, aggressive and violent moves that all the uh, human characters in this game possess. Now, as I mentioned, each human has three moves. Uh, Choke Collar, which you saw just before, and Discipline, which you just saw there, are uh, the first two of Cheron's, uh, as well as the uh, Tail Docking move, which we don't see in this video, but is the third and final one of Cheron's moves. Now, we'll talk about the moves of the Pokémon. Um, as you can see, this is probably the only part of the game that uh, complies with Peter's view that uh, this is a suitable game for children to be playing to encourage them against animal cruelty and uh, those cruel acts towards animals. And now I'm not saying that I'm completely against uh, Peter or anything along those lines, but just the fact that they consider that this game uh, will be able to help in those matters is just frankly ridiculous. Now we've managed to beat the trainer so you're probably thinking great we get a new Pokemon to add to our party so we'll join them, we'll be stronger, we'll be a team and we'll defeat all the trainers we have to come and then Tepig arrives and has no ears. This only adds to the uh, horrible and morbid nature of this game which is meant to be marketed towards kids. And then we come to the main path, which uh, is filled on the sides with bear traps, barbed wire, and trees covered in blood. Now I want to see where Peter was coming from with this idea, but I just can't get inside the minds of whoever created this to try and comprehend why they thought this would be a good idea to market towards children as a game that encourages, or discourages, sorry, cruelty against animals. Now the nurse here is going to offer us a chest, which is the first of three chests. Each chest contains something different that relates to animal cruelty in some way. The first, a video that I could not get to show you guys, unfortunately, but it basically shows a four minute or so video of animals locked up in cages and uh, things such as that. The next chest will give us a wallpaper so that every time we log onto our computers, we can receive a swift kick to the childhood. And the last chest contains a set of trading cards, so you can share the fun with your friends. Now we see we're in a battle which brings up the topic of how little research Peter uh, put into this game. They try to convince us that all the characters inflicted cruel and horrible punishments on the Pokemon. Or in actual fact, Professor Juniper, as well as all the other professors, conducted extensive research into aiding the Pokemon throughout the series and not harming them. As well, you should note the sign Pikachu is holding, stating, I support Team Plasma on the left of the screen, which are the Team Rocket of the Monochrome series. And while they stand to free the Pokemon, with quotations, from their owners, which does support Peter's views, but they do this by first battling them, and then stealing them from their trainers once they've weakened them enough. This lack of research that was put in also shows up later in this parody, in the battle with Ash, who comes across as a selfish circus trainer, simply wanting to use Pokemon to make money. This is far the opposite to Ash's actual personality throughout the whole TV series, and the movies. Ash shows he cares for not just his, but all Pokemon in both the movies and the TV series. The example I offer is from the Pokemon movie, the original that is. During the large battle at the end of the film, Ash sacrifices himself 
to stop the destruction of all the, of the Pokemon, and helps them all to realise that they're equals, both between each other and with the humans in the series. Now that we've defeated Professor Juniper, we'll get the third Pokemon to join our party. Now this Pokemon is Snivy, which as you'll see in a minute, is shown with a syringe sticking out of the top of its head, as well as being dog tagged or uh, scientifically tagged so that Professor Juniper could supposedly keep track of the Snivy. Now this again shows that Peter did absolutely no research into the fact that none of the professors were anything like this, as well as adding to the horrific and overly mature nature for a game targeted towards children. Now on the topic of this game not being suitable for children, Peter has released a children friendly, again in quotation marks, version of this game, which in actual fact is no different from this original game. Now this here is the one part of the game that I will commend for doing a small amount of research into Pokemon lore and finding this slightly amusing meme which was then added into the game. Now as I mentioned earlier, Peter has made games like this before, such as Super Tofu Boy and Mario Kills Tanuki, and although Peter has stated that these games are supposedly tongue-in-cheek, they still maintain that the original games send the wrong message. Mario supposedly encouraging the wearing of fur taken from live tanuki or raccoon dogs, and Super Meat Boy encouraging the eating of meat, like that's a bad thing but I'll try to stay objective here. Now on the topic of meat and use of dead animals, we come to Getsus, leader of one arm of Team Plasma in the recently released Pokemon Black and White 2, who can be seen here wearing a coat made from the skins of dead Pokemon, as well as preaching the fact that used Pokemon should be put toward making more furs, as well as meat for all of the humans to eat. Now firstly, not once in the series have Pokemon been eaten and or skinned for furs. And secondly, this is the leader of the group that Pikachu can be seen supporting to the left of the screen. The game contradicts itself in so many ways, it is clear they did not put nearly enough effort into making this a valid point for the argument that they are trying to make and it is quite frankly a wasted opportunity for them. Now I have another chance to discuss the horrifying moves the Trainers Alliance, as it is called, again, use against the Pokemon. The cleaver Jetsus can be seen using here. The giant shears Charon uses in the first battle to dock the tails of the Pokemon, and the knife Professor Juniper uses in the second battle to, as the name of the attack suggests, dissect your Pokemon, are truly horrifying and as mentioned, are not censored in the slightest for the children's version of the game. Now as we approach the end of the battle with Getsus, we will see probably the most horrifying thing this game has to offer, which is the final Pokemon that's going to join our party. This final Pokemon is an Oshawott, and as you will see here in just a minute, it has actually been skinned alive, which contradicts with one of their previous games, that fired against the idea of having an animal being skinned alive for use in fur coats, such as the one Getsus is actually wearing. Now I want to try and conclude here, and I want to sum up a few points. First, Peter, although supporting a very good cause, and again, I'll say I'm not against them, or any other groups associated with them, or that do a similar job in other countries, but they just don't know how to convey their message properly. In reality, this, and the previous games they have created, are just more publicity stunts than anything else. And sure you can say that I've fallen forward on making this video, and you're watching this video. But if we sit idly by and twiddle our thumbs, the same sort of people are going to continue to run these groups. Think of the amount of time and resources wasted, creating what is, although simple, a fairly in-depth flash game, fighting for the rights of video game characters. Secondly, the quotes high members of Peter have released are just ridiculous and show that something needs to change at the hands at the heads of these company of this company. Games such as Pokemon send kids the wrong message that exploiting and abusing those are defense who are defenseless is acceptable when it's not. But with Pokemon black and blue, children can experience the great feeling that comes from saving others from harm. Really? Really, Peter? Sure, they can experience these great feelings while using their favourite Pokemon that have been depicted near death 
and covered in cuts, bandages, syringes and tags, being butchered with meat cleavers, knives and garden clippers by their favourite human characters, and not to mention the generally horrific ideas that some Pokemon have been skinned alive or had their ears completely chopped off. Finally, we need to do something to stop the ridiculous opinion of video games in today's society. The roasting I am blasting this game with is really not specifically targeted at this game, but more so targeted at how video games and technology in general are seen in society by the majority of people running our countries. We all remember SOPA, I'm sure, and 100% of the time if a mass murdering has occurred, it is found out a month later down the track that the murderer was an avid player of Doom or Call of Duty, thus giving people something to attribute this behaviour to. We look for easy ways out of things, and using video games as a scapegoat, or in the case of Peter trying to argue games bring up bad habits in our children, saying that Pokemon in particular paints a rosy picture of thinly veiled animal abuse is just ridiculous and needs to stop. We each can play a part in changing things. The elections are currently occurring in America, and currently the average age of voting is too damn high in countries where voting is optional. And in countries such as Australia, where voting is mandatory, many young people waste their vote, and so we continue to see absolutely no change in the things that matter to us. I know this has gotten strangely political, but this is the easiest place to start, because in most countries, it is where we have the largest say in what can occur. And if it starts there, it should create a snowball effect onto the larger companies of these countries, who continue to misunderstand video games. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please like, favorite, and share this video to spread it around. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye.